Um, thank you everyone for attending uh, this afternoon, making the trip down, all, all of the, uh, the media. I'll now just hand over to Joel for uh, an announcement. <laughs> this, this is actually probably a little bit easier for me um, today um, than probably what most people would think. Um, about six weeks ago I decided that this would be it, um, that I'd finish my playing days at the Geelong Footy Club. Uh, when lose or draw, come the end of the year. Um, it was a de decision made um, amongst my manager who I wanted to catch up with before round 23. Um, we didn't then decided, as I got him to ask a few, as he's got a few of the current players on the list, Mitch, um, Tom Hawkins, Tom Stewart, um, over the year to just um, see how I'm going and, uh, and if I should move on. I then touched base with Paddy Dangerfield, obviously, um, to see how he thinks I'm going um, through background, just uh, through background chats. And they're as loyal people as you would get. Um, they all want me to play on. Uh, it's not going to be the case. Um, I went to Tommy and I decided that we should speak to Hawk. Um, and just get his opinion. He said the same thing, it's up to me um, whether I go on. Um, and I decided uh, out of that that um, I could go probably at 85% next year um, and I'd, everyone would look after me, but I'd had to, I had to be all in and uh, I just couldn't um, do that. I've had such a fun year this year um, amongst the playing group, amongst his football club. Uh, home life's been really good. Uh, I'm having a baby come February, which is exciting. Um, and uh, from there I had to go in and tell the coach uh, on Friday morning um, before we played West Coast. And um, I didn't know that Hock hadn't spoken to him. Um, so that was uh, one of the toughest conversations that I've had to do, along with um, telling a few others. but. That Friday morning, I uh, went in there and um, uh, basically told him that I was okay. I was okay with the decision that um, I'd come to with Hock and Tommy. And um, he, he wasn't too sure what I was talking about, but I had to explain to him that I wouldn't be um, continuing on next year. Um, How did the meeting go post that? Well, first, we, first of all, we had a bit of a cry together. I went to walk out the door and then I had to turn around and uh, have another hug before I walked out. Um, and then Scotty's probably delivered his worst performance of a pre-game <laughs> speech that I've ever seen, um, which was quite disappointing because it was Paddy's 300th and I took the moment away from him. Um, but it was, uh, you know, we had a, we had a special time. Um, I couldn't even tell a couple of my best mates um, until grand final week, Frulli and Brocky. Um, couldn't tell any of the players, couldn't let them play on emotion. So it was a visit to Hawke's house yesterday morning, um, which wasn't easy. Popped, off, popped into Mitch's on the way from there and then as the day went on, I grabbed a few other of um, the important people at this footy club. That's, you know, every, I, everyone's important, sorry, but um, Paddy, Stewie, Blitz and Garth, who I played footy with for over 200 games, you know, majority of them. Um, it's been unbelievable. I've had uh, great support the whole way along. Managers, Tommy and Catherine, um, can't thank them enough. They, they know that they, they've guided me the whole journey um, with what I should be doing, who I should be speaking to, how I deliver things. Um, my family sit in the front row, uh, three brothers that I've grown up, we've played footy against each other at the highest level. Um, I got to play with one of them. Um, you know, I won't, whatever I say, it won't do them justice. Um, Mum and Dad, the journey started and, um, you know, I just I can't really put into words and... Um, I can't understand how they did what they did for us, um, us boys back then and got us to games and fed us and we're here, we all had a good crack at it. Um, the journey's been good. 
And I just want to speak about the Geelong Footy Club as a whole. Um, I've played under three presidents. Um, I've had two coaches, two CEOs, three footy managers. And it's just such a stable and um, un unbelievable place to go to work, um, led by those people that have been in charge over those, those times. But um, they put people in underneath them that uh, love going to work. You don't come to the Geelong Footy Club to go to work for money. You come for the experience. And uh, I've loved every part of that. I guess I can pass it over to whoever now. I'm a bit sick of speaking. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just open up uh, to questions now from, from the floor. So happy to take any. Joel, did anyone try and change your mind? And did they have any success? Did you, did you wrestle with this decision? Or it sounds like it was, it was one you were actually reasonably comfortably, is that true? Yeah, very comfortably. Um, I played okay in that last game of the year against West Coast and then in the first final I, I went okay again and uh, it was probably only my wife that said, are we making the right decision? Uh, <laughs> at that stage there was only you know six people um, that, had, that um, knew. Um, my brothers didn't even know at that stage. Um, decided to tell them a little bit more further down the track. Um, so that it was, uh, it was an easier decision. I, I chose to do it that way. Do you think it would have been a, um, would have changed your mind had the result been different on Saturday? Do you think that would... How much satisfaction do you take, John, from the way you were playing when you finished up and to get that on with success in that last game? So I mean, not many players get to end it that way. Yeah, I just feel so lucky. Um, I've just spoken to the boys down in the rooms, um, and you know, I look. I was looking around the rooms, and um, I just saw just people that I wanted to go to work with, and I'm wondering what I'm going to do next year, and I'm not going to be with people like that. Um, you know, they, they've all been a joy. Um, you just, yeah, footy clubs are special, and I'm in a really special one. How, uh, did you ready yourself to talk to the to your teammates? I actually didn't, I, and, I, and I wasn't going to. But then um, I woke up this morning at three a.m. and my wife caught me again, um, probably thinking about you know what I was going to say and you know if I was going to deliver it perfectly and get it right. And then I've never been that way. You know, I've sort of um, I enjoy the emotional intelligence side of life where you just do things off the cuff sometimes and. Um, I just told them that they're so lucky for being here and, um, and I've enjoyed their company. Um, I'll turn into the biggest fan. I asked a couple of them if they'd find me some tickets because I've never had to do that before, but <laughs> I'm sure we'll work that out. How hard was it grand final day knowing that it'll be your last game of football preparing but not being able to share that information with any of your teammates? No, that was easy. No, the, the game was... You know, as I said, probably pre the game, um, I played every game like it was my last. It's the games are really hard. Um, I said when I could probably go 85% next year. It's I know that's not good enough. Um, you got to go all out, and I was ready um, for that straight away. When I decided that it was going to be it, I knew that I had to just buckle in for six weeks here and um, and make sure I get the job done. Chris, can you take him to that meeting before round 23 and? Obviously, you would have been a bit surprised given not having that heads up. Well, Joel and I, in particular, have spoken about um, the the uh, inevitability of that day coming. Uh, but the thing that continually struck me about Joel was his ability to care for others and prioritise others. So, you know, the the end of in my opinion, it was he's the best. When you take everything into consideration, he's the best player I've ever seen, uh, and the best representative of the Geelong Footy Club that you could possibly imagine. And so, even when uh, the opportunity came for him to take a bit of the limelight, his priority was to make sure that his decision didn't negatively impact anyone else. And if you don't mind me saying, he's, he spoke really well just before to the rest of the playing group around uh, the need to keep it from everyone so they could prioritise the team performance going into a final series. Uh, did play pretty well in that last game um, against West Coast and the first final as well. And 
yeah, I think he was committed to his decision, but the greatest going out on top, I just can't think of a better way for um, for Joel to finish. And he just, I, I think he will, like he'll still be our biggest fan. You know, he spoke much better about it 15 minutes ago than I am now, um, but he doesn't know any other way. Um, and that's only one of the reasons we love him. And the, the, re the reason why um, it was kept from Chris was so they had a moment that was authentic. And Joel, we see you as this sort of steely person on the outside. And, you know, we've seen a whole lot more emotion than in the last week. Has it sort of surprised you outside of it for you at different times? Uh, I am pretty soft at times. I'm looking at my wife here. Um, <laughs> I do cuddle her, I do love her, um, and I think the boys know that side of me probably within the locker room a lot more too. Um, it's funny, I'll take you into a moment on the weekend, but um, I came off in the last quarter. Um, Sam De Koning was on the uh, interchange bench with me on one side, Blitz was on the other side. and. Um, Sam just said, you can't, you can't finish, um, which is pretty special. Like a 21-year-old kid probably read the moment. Blitz knew that I was in a bit of trouble. Um, my, the heart was racing, the eyes were watering, um, and I knew that I was going out for my last 15 minutes uh, of the game, yeah, of my career. And um, Yeah. I am a little bit soft. How do you think you'll be feeling from round one next year? Uh, I, uh, there'll be a stage where I absolutely miss it. I'm okay now. Um, I'll miss it when the boys go back to training. Um, the fierce competitor in me won't leave me. Um, but it's, uh, it's the other side of it when I have to you know, lie on the floor instead of sitting on the couch um, because I'm so sore. Um, like my wife has seen crawl to the toilet instead of walk during the middle of the night. Like, they have been um, scenarios that have played out at different times um, that I probably won't miss that side of it. Um, but I will miss, I will miss being around this place. You have a very remarkable CV and looking back over your career, are there any standouts, any moments or achievements that really take the cake for you? It's the people you play with. It's the front row. It's the people you play with. They, I mean, and that's not a stat, but well, Hawks is a stat. We played over 300 games together, but which is ridiculous. <laughs> but it's, um, yeah, I can't put it into a, you know, a number thing for you. But I just love playing with boys. Given that, Joel, can you take us into what it meant to lead the group? now to a premiership, given that you'd had that success? I think I probably would have been okay, Pete, um, either way. Well, I was going to have to be, <laughs> because I'd made that decision and I wasn't changing it. But um, uh, it made walking around that ground on the weekend even sweeter. Um, I knew, like, there's the stories of the boys' careers, whether they have come into the system late and I've got Tom Atkins and Tom Stewart in my eye line um, or they've come from different clubs um, and they've got to see a piece of the Geelong footy club you know I just hope I've set it up and with a number of different people that um, these boys just uh, enjoy being around the place and and um, they just want to go to work and get the best out of each other um, yeah that's what I'd probably sum it up and want to be reminded for. What are you planning on doing? Well, I, I plan on probably buying some golf clubs. Um, <laughs> my wife's probably going to ask us Forky. to call no. into uh, Geelong Travel after this and uh, go somewhere on a holiday. Um, but no, like I just I probably mentioned, but um, I was all in. Um, footy was like, you know, I, I had to make sure I finished the job here. I'll take some time now. Uh, my phone's turned off, but my manager's is on. 
He's, <laughs> he's got a trade period. He tells me he's busy, but I'm sure he'll still uh, take calls at different stages. Do you want to stay in footy? Ah, uh, look, I'm, I'm open to anything. I love working in team environments, um, whether that be footy or another sport or, yeah. I, I walked out of, uh, I walked into this club when I was 18. Um, you know, I may be walking out of the locker room, I may be still working here, I may be working elsewhere. I'm, yeah, I haven't got that answer for you. Joel, a rumour on the room file this morning suggested you're at a, a service station on Saturday night and we're having a, a few car troubles with a key and had to talk someone into giving you a lift home. Can you shed a little bit more light on what happened on Saturday <laughs> night at the servo? Only you. The, uh, yeah, well, so I, I drove home Saturday night. Um, I, I'd had three beers after the grand final, which sounds a bit boring uh, for a lot of people. Um, but uh, I wanted to get Britt home um, as she was pretty exhausted being 18 weeks pregnant. Um, so we decided that we would drive home. Um, but I didn't read the play that well and got back to the place that she was at and forgot the key that was in my locker. So Harry Taylor did the uh, right thing and went and ran and got the key. But when he jumped back in the car and I dropped him off, he left it in his pocket. Um, <laughs> I decided to uh, turn into the APCO in uh, Barwon Heads and uh, just grab some goodies because I hadn't eaten enough for the night. And um, when I put into gear, it probably then dawned on us that we were in a bit of trouble and we had no key. So there was a young P plate, a girl that had been uh, at the pub. Her name was Emily. Um, and I asked Emily if she could drop me home. And I jumped in the car and I asked her how her day was and she. She wasn't in the best of moods, to be honest. She, it was a busy day at the pub, Barwon Heads pub, and um, she didn't really pick up who I was uh, at the time. <laughs> she asked me how I my day was, and I said it was actually pretty good. Pretty good. Um, <laughs> and then uh, she said, what did I get up to? I said, I actually uh, played in the game today. And uh, she still hadn't picked up who I was, <laughs> which was a nice thing. Um, and then uh, she asked for my name and then she started swearing at herself. Um, <laughs> we picked up the key, we drove back to the car and I told Emily that I actually have the cup in the car and would she like a photo? Um, and uh, she got her photo and uh, she drove back home to Geelong. Chris, you've obviously got a, a lot of great leaders at this footy club, but how much of a, a void does that leave in that space with the job? Oh, it'd be ir irreplaceable. <coughs> but what Joel has done is set our footy club up. Uh, in so many ways and I alluded to it uh, in a previous um, answer but my t we first met at the end of well in a professional sense I guess and at the end of 2010 and it struck me from the day I met him that he was always putting others in front of him and that extended to trying to influence others to get to the position where they could lead this footy club in his mind as well as he has. Now that won't be possible. Uh, but I, I think we all feel much better prepared for the next few years at least um, because of the, um, at least in my time, the 12 years that Joel's um, invested in, in all of us. I think it was about halfway through the last quarter before you went back on. Um, Joel picked up the phone down on the bench, which is kind of how our relationship works. Like, it's not me in the box picking up the phone, talking to him. It comes back the other way. Um, but it just sort of struck me like it, th this was, again, it, sh it should have been his moment, but uh, he just wanted to share it with, with, with me. And that is, look, I mean, there are so many things that I'd, I'd prefer to keep private, but it will come out over the journey, I'm sure. Um, to be so important and to deserve your opportunity to enjoy some individual um, accolades. He, he keeps thinking about the most, what I think are peripheral things, um, because that's just, that's just who he is. And it won't change now that his footy career is over. That's, you know, we won the footy lottery, getting to spend a decade or so with, uh, with Joel Selwood. And now it's the, it's the turn for others to um, see what a truly great person he is, because you could, you could forget about everything he's done on a football field um, and, and the rest would still be amazing. Yeah. Uh, and so, 
It's a big CV off field. Yeah, the, I mean, the off field stuff. Again, it's not for me to speak. I, sh I should speak less and leave it to Joel, but. Um, yeah, it's just been a privilege for us to get to learn from the great man. Joel, can you talk us through that last 15 minutes when you came back on? You knew the game was won, it was going to be your last 15 minutes, and you got your goal and, and all that sort of stuff. What, what was that like for you? Oh, I felt like I was on a cloud, but I felt like I was in a cloud um, for probably the second half. Um, it has been noted that I did tell the boys that we had won it during the three-quarter time huddle, but it took me back to a, um, a great captain and a coach that I had back in 2007 on that we make sure that we play the game out for the last 30 minutes as hard as what we've played out for the whole year. I reminded the boys. Um, and uh, it, it was actually, it was a nice 15 minutes. Um, yeah. And the goal? It's probably my best, best goal I've ever kicked. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's only because Hawke wasn't in my eye line and Tyson, I think he was, but Tyson doesn't think I kick it to him enough. So uh, <laughs> it was, um, yeah, I had, a, I had a good day. There was that, that great shot of obviously you and, and Tom post-siren and, and the emotions obviously to take more, more context now. But um, how do you think Tom's going to go? And you're going to go without playing, playing footy with Tom. How's that relationship going to go? Mitch will still kick it to him. Ah, <laughs> oh, I'll miss seeing him every day. Yeah, I'll miss seeing him every day, going to work, leaning on him. Tom and Harry, um, you know, we got to go through the whole journey together, basically. Um, both nearly 300 games, for nearly 300 games with Harry. Um, over 300 with Hawke. You know, they, I was leaning on them the whole time. They were leaning on me. Um, probably know me better than anyone else. And Steve, I know that today's obviously about celebrating Joel and, and everything you know, he's come to stand for, but in terms of um, him moving on and, and, and you guys maybe having some, some cap space to go chase, chase someone else, is that, is that going to be an aggressive play this trade period for you guys in, in, in the next few weeks? Uh, look, I... I respect your question, but we hear about Joel today, so yeah, I, I, I don't want to go there about what it looks like in the coming weeks. Can I go there just a little bit? Oh, okay. <laughs> right. Now this is, I've gone rogue Who are we getting? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm can interested. I, can I say there won't be much cap space because Joel's finishing? <laughs> in all seriousness. Oh. Yeah. And again, without spelling it out, it speaks to the man. Yeah. Could have had us over a barrel, we would have paid him whatever he asked for. Yeah. But he never did. Never did, exactly. What do you think allowed him to be such a competitive piece for so long? Um, besides Bryce and Marie, I'd, um, oh, well, probably your brothers as well. Um, no, I don't know. I've never been able to put my finger on it. It's what we've been, it's that. Uh, that endless search for trying to bottle um, what. Joel Selwood's been to the Geelong Footy Club so we could pass it on to everyone else and I think there are bits and pieces but it's impossible to quantify. Uh, and, and, you know, the on-field's impossible to replicate, um, you know, the off-field's impossible to replicate and then you put it all together and I've asked him a couple of times, we've had these conversations, I remember vividly we were on the other side of the ground here in the hickey stand um, when this side was being redeveloped. It was really early in the season. Uh, Joel had had a terrible pre-season, just injury riddled, had hardly trained. Uh, didn't play any practice games and the first five games of the season he was clearly the best player in the competition. And I mean, it challenged everything that I thought about footy because I mean, he did have a pretty good training base but it was completely illogical what, what he'd done. Uh, and. and we spoke about it, and really, I think I must have sounded like a little kid, you know, a fan speaking to a legend. You know, how, how, what, what is it? Um, and he thought it was pretty simple. Um, and I, like, I, I don't really want to talk about exactly what he said, um, but I don't know, when was that? 2015, something like that. What, sure. Whenever it was, but you know, in the ensuing six or seven years, uh, I, I've tried as hard as I 
as I could to sort of work it out again so we could pass it on and I didn't get there. Like every, everything is he, that he has done, um, it just defies logic. So yeah, Pete, I wish I could, I wish I could quantify it, but I can't, I'm sorry. Sorry, Chris. Joel, can you scarcely believe a boy from Bendigo could be embraced by a city like you have been for the last 16 years? Uh, no, I mean, uh, I was trying to explain to the boys before, but there, it does feel like a situation where when I did arrive, um, you know, won a great, you know, I won a premiership with a side that was ready to go um, back then. Um, they got their act together. Um, we'd be able to they were able to work through and, and be so dominant. Um, that's the hardest thing about right now more than anything else is that we're at this stage where, um, you know, we've been trying to get for a little while where um, there's just so much good footy in front of these guys and, and they're doing it with ease and they're doing it with together um, and they're loving playing with each other. Um, the magic potion, you know, everyone's looking for it, but um, it's not always not always easy to, to do what they're doing. Um, and they are basically unbeatable at the moment. I'm sure there are lots of Cats fans crying at home today after hearing the news. How hopeful are you um, for what the next generation bring in, perhaps a father, son, daughter combination? <laughs> nah, maybe not that last part. We'll wait and see. They can do whatever they want. Britt and I, we, yeah, driving into the games, um, within that last six weeks, we saw all the 14s on the back and you look at them and you, uh, you just hope that they're not new jumpers uh, because their parents aren't going to be happy. Uh, but uh, yeah, it does make you pretty proud. Um, yeah, there'll be another number 14 one day and they'll do it as, just as proud, just like any other number. But yeah. I don't, don't, don't know where to take it. What's your advice to the next captain, whoever that may be? Have fun. Have fun. All right, we might wrap it up there, I think. Thank, thank you all for coming down today. Yeah, appreciate it.